Dandy and the crew journey to Meow's home world of Beetlejuice, and in doing so, get caught in an endless time loop. In my review of Space Dandy, Episode 10. I'd say my favorite thing about Space Dandy, aside from the gorgeous animation, incredible music, enduring characters, and side-splitting humor, is probably how it pays homage to classic sci-fi genres. We've already seen zombies, intergalactic space races, massive wars going on with giant robots, and this week they decide they're going to try to crack the space-time continuum, and in typical Space Dandy fashion, things really don't work too well for the crew. However, this was probably one of the more interesting episodes of the series because we got a little more development for the character of Meow, and considering that he's one of the main members of the crew and we're 10 episodes into the series, I think it's about damn time. Now, we've already known when we were introduced to Meow in the very first episode that he's basically just sort of like a loner, he's a drifter in space, and he left home for unknown reasons, and we find out why in this episode. His home planet of Beetlejuice apparently really isn't all that exciting. It's, you know, got all of the typical people there, all of the cat people, which are not really cats at all. But you actually do get introduced to Meow's family this week, and they're hilarious. They're very cute and adorable, just like he is. Uh, he has a lot of siblings, he has a mother, he has a father. And it's really his uh, whole interactions with his father, which really determine this week's episode, even though they sort of relive the same events every single day, they really don't become aware of this until about a hundred days in, which is very, very funny. But some of the things I like is just how subdued his actual home world is, because a lot of the times when they've gone to random planets in Space Dandy, they're always just so extreme to the point where you almost can't take it all in in a single view. There's always so much stuff going on in the backgrounds here. And Meow's home planet is probably the most normal planet that we have seen so far. In fact, all the Beetlejuiceans live pretty much like typical modern-day Japanese people. And they just live very slow, and they love to relax and do their own thing. And that's not really Meow's lifestyle at all, and that's why he left the planet. However, he is back now, and he is forced to deal with his old problems. And that's where a lot of the drama comes from this week, and of course, a lot of the humor. One thing that is interesting to note is how this whole time warp thing happened, is because at the very beginning of the episode, the Gogol Empire, which is by far the most pitiful villains I've seen in almost any series, but they're still funny, they are going up against the Jikro Empire, and they're having a big war with this massive robot, which is a fantastic reference to the classic super robot genre of the late 70s and 80s and pretty much any giant robot anime you see now. There's just so much great references to it and the fact that it actually looks kind of like a giant gun cannon from Mobile Suit Gundam I think is really awesome. But their battle actually creates this like giant force of pionium energy which causes it to fly towards Meow's planet which is you know a little convenient but it hits this one calendar which makes it get stuck on the 8th and that's sort of the main conflict of the episode, is them trying to figure out how they're going to get to the next day, because the whole point they're at Meow's planet is because they want to get the Aloha Oi fixed, but the part they need is not coming in until the next day, so they are infinitely stuck at this place, and they even try to do a few things, like trying to get a car from some of Meow's friends, who are terrible rappers, by the way, and they just explode in the sky and die, and apparently, even if they die, they're just going to repeat the next day. In fact, there was this one scene that I thought was just one of the funniest lines of dialogue, from QT this week, which is when they finally start to realize that they're in a loop and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do about it, is QT basically says to Dandy, hey, if you shoot me in the face, do you think I'll return the next day? One of the funniest scenes this week that constantly gets looped is Dandy, Meow, and QT going to this bar on his planet, and he meets this old girl who he knew from junior high, and he always had a crush on her, and there's this scene where she continuously keeps dropping a glass, and every single day when he figures out what's going on, he tries to capture it, and try to, you know, look like a badass here. And eventually, when he finally does start to schmooze up to her a little bit, she finally reveals that she is gay. She's a lesbian. And all of this has been completely for naught, and it's a total buzzkill for Meow. Because he just sort of kind of got comfortable with the fact that maybe he is going to be here forever. Maybe he has no choice, and he's going to have to make the most of it. But it's at this point that he freaks out, and the scene immediately cuts to him grabbing a chainsaw and trying to cut this calendar. And that's the main conflict, is in order to get back to the actual time, they're going to have to remove the 8th from the calendar. However, it's completely stuck, and they do everything from shooting it with guns rocket launchers, attacking it multiple times, nothing is working. However, the deus ex machina for this week's episode is actually going to come from Meow's father. And this is really important because this is when Meow sort of kind of comes to term with his father's feelings and what he wants to do with his future. And this is something that I think a lot of young people 
can truly relate to. I know that I can relate to it because even my father, who has his own path and his own career, you know, he's off doing his own thing. And for a long time, he really wanted me and my brother to sort of, you know, pick up in his footsteps and sort of do what he was doing. But we decided to sort of go off and do our own thing. But at the same time, we still have an incredible mutual respect for each other and what we do. And I have to say, the things that my dad does is really impressive. I couldn't do them the way he does. And that's exactly what happens in this episode, because Meow's father is a metal worker, and he creates screws. And he uses this device to sort of open up the calendar again, and they're able to rip the page off, and thus, time is back to normal. The scene ends kind of cheesily, though, with Meow leaving the planet and sort of accepting the fact that, you know, I don't want to live here, but I'll always still come to visit, I'll always still have fond memories of this place. There's no place like home. And his dad gives him his acceptance to let him go out into space and be a badass alien hunter. And that's where the episode ends with the narrator coming in and reminding us that even though the time loop is over, they've sort of always been in a time loop anyway because when they go back to the ship, they're just doing what they were doing before, which is just sitting on their asses, not getting any work done. And it was just a really well-handled episode. I love this episode. I could talk about it for three hours. There's so many little like details in it that I love. Uh, all the animation cues are very good this week. I loved all the designs of the Beetlejuiceans. They all just didn't look like just another version of Meow. They had their own distinct characteristics and voices and designs, and I really liked that. I wish we could have spent a little more time with Meow and his family, but still, all the funny stuff this week, especially when they figured out that they are in the loop, is by far one of the funniest things ever. Especially because it's really the narrator who has to tell them. He sort of breaks the fourth wall or the fifth wall whatever the fuck it is that the narrator you know he's talking to him and he basically says you guys this is the 108th day you've been in a loop forever and when they finally realize it it's just it, it really clicks and it's very funny and you know this is the type of story that we've actually seen a lot of different times like you know there's the i wish christmas was every day there's groundhog day you know we've seen the story of the infinite looping thing before but i do like the way it was handled here and you know since it was backed by incredible animation great music, and just a lot of really funny moments. That's what I think I loved about it. And I was really glad that we finally got a Meow-centric episode because he's definitely one of the more interesting characters of the entire Aloha Oi. And considering he only has to go up against a robot and some dude who's obsessed with boobies, that's not really saying too much. But still, this was a really fun episode. Uh, I have no complaints with it, and when I have no complaints with an episode, I drop a 10 out of 10 on it, and that's what I'm going to do for this week's episode. It was just... Really good, enduring, funny, just a great mix of what makes Space Dandy a really entertaining show. And it was obviously, enough, oddly enough, the uh, most subdued episode of the series. But I still recommend it. If you are following it, check it out for a ton of really great laughs and all of those classic sci-fi tropes. Check it out, guys. Space Dandy is like the new anime version of Futurama. It is the ultimate homage to sci-fi, and it has got some beautiful animation. Check it out, guys. So if you guys had a chance to check out this week's episode of Space Dandy, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it with your comments below. You can tell me about your favorite moments, maybe some things you want to see from the future of this series, what you want to see from the next episode. Remember guys, before you leave, make sure and hit that like button so you can give this video a thumbs up. It's definitely one of the easiest ways to support our videos. And you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. So, I'll see you next time guys. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.